welcome to our first Facebook Live. First, I want to start out by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Danielle Barnett, and I'm the Arts Education Director for Bohemian Arts. Um, Bohemian Arts is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that was created to elevate artists, educate students, and entertain audiences of all ages through artistic expression. Uh, art in all its forms can have such a significant impact on people's lives. Our mission at Bohemian Arts is to provide high quality arts programming that is inclusive, eclectic, and accessible to all. Uh, check out our website at bohemianarts.org to learn more about us, to make a donation, or to find out how you can get involved. Uh, so today we're gonna, take, we're gonna talk about what makes a great audition and we have two awesome panelists with us. So I'd like to welcome Brittany Campbell and Victoria Patton. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. We've been like chatting for almost an hour now. <laughs> Technology. Okay. <laughs> like welcome. Okay. So Brittany Campbell is a director, choreographer, actor, and dancer. She has a bachelor's uh, in drama from the University of California, Irvine, with an emphasis in acting and directing. And she also has 20 years of dance training from various studios. Uh, all across the United States. I thought that was really interesting. Um, she's directed, assistant directed, and choreographed many productions, including uh, a lot of local productions here with uh, Fine Arts Network and other companies. Uh, and then Victoria Patton is an accomplished stage performer as well as an experienced musical director. She's been part of many productions, both locally and regionally. In addition to performing and musically directing, Victoria is passionate about teaching voice and piano uh, and providing audition and performing, performance coaching to students of all ages. So she's perfect. They're both perfect for what we're going to do today. <laughs> <laughs> Hence why, why you were asked to do this. Um, so let's start off with, uh, so we'll start off with Brittany and then we'll do Victoria. So same question. Um, so what is your theatrical background in a nutshell, and how did you end up on the creative side of the table? Um, so uh, much of what you've already said is kind of just like the educational background portion, um, but I got into it. So I grew up doing dance, and uh, I was always involved in doing those types of productions, and then in high school, um, we actually did a production of Fiddler on the Roof <laughs> and they needed more dancers. <laughs> and so I ended up getting into theater from that or at that moment. And then um, in high school, we had a directing uh, or a production that the, the students got to direct. And um, I was able to then do that. Um, and that really sparked my interest in that side of the um, profession kind of early on. Uh, then I went to, to college and I was going for business. And then literally the day I was supposed to start for my bachelor's in business, I quit. <laughs> and because my friend had asked me the night before um, and said, you know, why are you pursuing something that's not your dream? Um, because, you know, you're told a lot that it's very difficult to make uh, it professionally. And it is. Yeah. Um, and, but at the same time, it's like, if that's what you truly are passionate about, you know, why spend all this time and money on something that is not uh, what you really are desiring to do. So ended up going to UCI uh, for bachelor's in drama. Um, and while there took a lot more directing classes uh, and just ended up that being my focus uh, by the last year I was there and, um, just that sparked. Then I got out from there and or finished. And then um, I went and started interning um, at different professional theaters and uh, freelancing. Um, and that's, and then I moved back home <laughs> when I started having kids. Um, and uh, then, and eventually took on Fine Arts Network as uh, their artistic director and was invited to do that and took that on. And now I freelance and I do that. And that's my long story. story. <laughs> um, I want to focus for a second, just um, 
so you were a dancer primarily, and then you had that experience in high school where you able you were to direct. Mm -hmm. What what kind of like switched for you? Like all of a sudden you were you kind of like changed course and you went from dance to directing. Um, I mean, it's still so. Even now, I don't feel like I'm I'm solely one or the other. Um, it was just more of, it was now another outlet that I could express myself in. Um, yeah. So also I think I really like to make like pictures on stage. Yeah. <laughs> from, from my dance background, I feel like um, it, I have a, 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 an ease at looking at the stage and, and figuring out how things need to move in order for it to tell the story, but also, um, but, you know, look good and look realistic in sense of yeah. um, like, you know, we don't live in lines. We don't stand. <laughs> Although now right. um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, so it didn't really like click to be my focus um, until college. I, I, you know, was intrigued. I started studying more about it, but then in college, I was like, okay, well, this is, I think the path I would want to go down. So. Awesome. And you know what? It takes, it takes some kind of bravery to do that, to change course like that, especially when you've like told everyone and you've committed and you're like, this is what I'm going to do. And then you're like, actually, <laughs> wait, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Victoria, same question. What is your theatrical background in a nutshell? Anything that I didn't cover in your intro? And then how did you end up on the creative side? I know you still act a lot. Um, like you were just in Pirates of Penzance? Pirates of Penzance, yeah. So how did you end up on the creative side of the audition table? Oh, um, wow, that is, <laughs> that's a long story. <laughs> So actually, like similarly to Brittany, um, I started off pursuing other things. I had been performing since I was eight, um, but then was encouraged to pursue something practical, you know, in college. And so in addition to studying music, I, um, well, I, I, I studied a whole lot of things that turned out to not be relevant to what I really wanted to do. Um, right. And, and right when I was supposed to start medical school, I kind of had the same moment Brittany did. And I was like, what am I doing? I love performing. And, um, and in terms of getting on the other side of the table, uh, I, during high school was able to shadow uh, music directors. And then also I helped coach choirs and do things of that nature. So I kind of like had the opportunity early on to see what that was about a little bit. Um, but then in college, uh, I music directed kind of out of necessity. We had, um, we had our official like shows through the school, but then we also had a theater uh, group that we would put on shows every semester ourselves and our music director fell through. So it was kind of like, well, there you go. Like I've got to do it. <laughs> yeah. I've, I, I've, I've shadowed people. I didn't really, you know, it was a big learning experience. Um, but that's kind of what started it. And then after all that school, uh, I came back around and, and had that moment of what am I doing? And, and, um, that journey took me to, to perform more often first. Uh, but then I, uh, started music directing more and more and and loved it and I really enjoy being on both sides it's, it's a totally different experience you know as an actor you get to make a character come alive but as part of the directing team you get to see this whole vision come together so right yeah um have you always played the piano I have yeah I, I started uh when I was five <laughs> and yeah, I studied privately um, for years. So yeah. And then that still kind of evolves once you start music directing and whatnot. But uh, I think that's crazy how like everyone kind of started on a different path and then, you know, you realize that that passion can take you, you know, that can be your job, that can be your life. And now you guys do it you know, like full time and it's your whole life. And uh, you're very fortunate. 
Um, and people who work with you too, you know, the people that are exposed to the art that you do. Um, that's really great that you're able to share that with uh, your students and, uh, you know, people in your casts and stuff like that. I love that. Thank you. So as far as auditioning goes, what are you generally looking for while you're casting a show? I know it's, you know, dependent and like specific on the show specific, you know, but generally, you know, is it a like personality? Is it a spark? Is it, you know, preparation? Like, what are the things that you're looking for? Um, for me, it's, I mean, it, like the overgeneralized saying is like the best person for the show or the best cast for the show. Um, but really what it is, is can the actors, do they have chemistry? Do they um, portray the characters with truth? Um, you know, how do they work with each other? Um, I, I really look for connection to the character um, mm -hmm. and not just kind of uh, overgeneralized emotion, <laughs> if yeah. that makes sense. Um, so, so yeah, for, for me, it's who can tell the story the best, um, really. Okay, Victoria? Yeah, I, I agree with everything you just said. I think in addition, um, like from a vocal from a vocal standpoint, maybe what are you mm. looking for? Can you tell, like, how long does it take you to notice how well prepared a person is? Hmm. Or, oh, you know, like how much they often practice? tell when they walk in. <laughs> yeah, um, even you know, and and we do kind of observe those things sometimes. It, it tells you. Uh, the amount of preparation that's been put in, you know, it's, it conveys something. And uh, I, like if there's live accompaniment, making sure right. that your cut is all perfectly ready. If the person understands how to explain to the accompanist what they're, you know, what they're wanting. So uh, as an accompanist, what, what are you looking for, for someone to ask you? Cause I feel like a lot of times that can be, you know, like if you want a certain tempo or something like that, like what how would you like to be asked? What information are you looking for from the, the auditioner? Um, personally, I love it when someone comes up and, and literally just sings the first line for me kind of in the tempo that they want. Okay. Um, that, that helps a lot. Uh, just to give a sense of like the feel, you know, especially if, if your accompanist isn't familiar with the song, you're gonna want to give them an idea of the tempo you want, um, but also like point out any any changes in the music that they might not be expecting. Like if it does have a time signature change or you need the tempo to pick up once it hits the chorus or whatnot. So being able to convey all those things um, really shows how prepared someone is. Um, in terms of vocals, uh, this kind of coincides with uh, another point, but I think choosing a really great cut is important. Yeah. Because really yeah. an audition is such a short amount of time to show uh, what you can do. And so starting off with something strong, I mean, a lot of times I'm forming an opinion within the first five seconds. So you wanna have a good cut. <laughs> Another, just to tack onto that, a piece of advice that I give for Sean and Jill, uh, my brother and sister when they're auditioning. Mm -hmm. um, so it can be so hard to pick an audition song. Um, and I think that that's something that a lot of people struggle with. Number one, you don't want to do something that's too popular. You know, you don't want to do something that doesn't, or that's super popular, but it doesn't showcase, you know, your vocal abilities. Um, so a rule of thumb that I always give them, I'm like, okay, what's the show? And then my next question is who wrote the music? Mm -hmm. You know, who, who is the composer? Mm -hmm. What else have they written? You know, is there something that they've written that's kind of off the beaten path that okay. not a lot of people would choose? Um, and then also, you know, if we go down that path and it doesn't pan out to be anything, then I'm like, okay, um, who played that role? Mm -hmm. What other roles have they played? Because, you know, they're going to sing about the same. Um, and look for things like within that genre, you know. Yeah, the same vein. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to go in singing, um, you know, something super dramatic 
for right. like, Camelot. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so like something figuring out what the tone is, you know, yeah. of the show. So important. Yeah. yeah. I um recently music directed Legally Blonde and we had someone come mm -hmm. in an audition with a song from Phantom of the Opera rather. And I mean beautiful song but it's yeah. very hard to envision how you're going to fit the style of the show if it's such a different singing style right yeah like, almost a completely different like genre yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> okay yeah. so uh, next question is how much does an actor's physical appearance uh, appearance matter um how much does what they look like determine where you put them or how you cast them so for me, I'm going to read what I wrote because I could go um, on <laughs> forever, this topic forever yeah. especially right now. So, <laughs> so I'm just going to read it. Um, all right. So this is a question that is really important right now. And I could spend the whole talk focusing on it. But to get to my answer, uh, in a show that is not speaking directly upon prejudices and oppressions due to someone's appearance um, or religious beliefs, uh, then for me, appearance does not matter. Um, yeah. If the actor can portray the character with honesty and they are the best actor for the role, then they should get the part. Um, now, I mean, in school, I wasn't taught that. Um, so, yeah. you know, I was taught, you know, you need to realize your type and then you need to follow that type. Um, yeah. And I How, think, like, narrow is that? Yeah. Like, I was always told, like, you'll get the mom roles. <laughs> You're right. a mom forever. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> but I can do other things, you know, so right. I think um, it's changing. People are realizing that the audiences are smarter than um, we give them credit. Um, yeah. They, you know, we can see a world that is much more eclectic and diverse on stage than perhaps was originally written to be but that doesn't lead to um not telling the story you know yeah uh, you can still tell the the moti motifs and the you know all of the things that come with the story um you know with people victoria anything to add <laughs> yeah um, well, I personally agree with everything you just said. I think from the perspective of a music director that works with a lot of different directors, it really comes down to the director's vision because there are those directors that would like for it to look as close to the Broadway cast as it as it can. Right. Um, and, you know, as a music director, a lot of times you're working around that vision. Um, I like to point out to my students that regardless of if it's a... Uh, you know, casting based on what the role stereotypically looks like, or if it's, or even if it is more diverse casting or more you know, re representative, it's just, uh, there's so many factors when casting a show and some of it is physical. It might even be, I know for me, I'm often too short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it can come down to some of these factors and I think realizing that as from the perspective of someone auditioning is helpful because I know I would get discouraged early on, um, especially you, you going for parts and having that feeling like, well, you know, am I not good enough or they, you know, not right. seeing something in me. And since being on the other side of the table, I do realize it's coming down a lot to the individual vision of the director. And just because you don't fit within that, like for that specific show, for whatever the reason, you know, it's it's not just based on what you bring to the table talent-wise. Right. And I think that's kind of comforting, but I agree that it is changing and I like to see it changing. You know, we we don't need it to look like the original to tell the story. Yeah, I'm definitely in the camp that, you know, if you've done the work and you are prepared vocally and, you know, when you're doing your sides and uh, you've done the research and you've practiced and things like that, those things uh, carry much further than, you know, other things. And I don't, I think that casting things specifically because or specifically based on what the original cast looked like, I, to me, that's so stale. It's so, you know, yeah. like if I wanted to watch that, 
I'd pull it up on YouTube. You know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. I don't want to watch the same rendition of the same show with the same looking people over and over again. It's like, that's what movies are for. <laughs> you yeah. can see that yeah. same thing over and over again in that same cast. Uh, but theater, you get to tell the story again. It's not that you get to sell, tell the story the same way. Yeah. And that's the great thing about live theater is that it's always different, you know, even from mm-hmm. night to night, you know, show to mm-hmm. show, it's always different. Um, and doing things, I, I like what you said about casting people based on, you know, all of those other factors as opposed to what they looked like. So doing it, you know, kind of blind in a sense. Um, if it doesn't specifically say like this character has right. to be male or female mm-hmm. or you know it, it has to be hispanic or it has to be this or whatever you know then mm-hmm. okay it, it can be anybody then you know mm-hmm. um i once auditioned for sound of music as one of the kids but too brown you know like didn't get it too brown <laughs> like and then i watched the show and i was like oh okay because i was only like nine you know but i was like okay i get it <laughs> Yeah, but if it's not explicitly, you know, needed to be that way, mm-hmm. then who cares? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so how much does dance training matter in, in an audition? I know, again, all of these questions are like, it's dependent on, you know, the show or the role right. or whatever, but dan- like specifically dance training. Um, I think, uh, you know, obviously like, you're going out for a chorus line you need to be trained <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> you need to have some technique um and a lot you know it depends also if you're doing community um theater to comparison to professional um you know there's some different varying um ability that you can uh, you know a good choreographer is going to take who they have and make them look good um, right but coming into an audition and if you just uh you know have the basics but then are expecting to get a um a lead in a dance show you know it's uh, unrealistic um i mean a good actor is always training so um, yeah. you know if if it's of the the three things that we work on you know mainly of acting vocals and dance if it's your weaker point get in some dance classes. Um, I feel like too, you know, even if you've had leads um, in other shows and, uh, but you want to expand your ability, like you don't take it for granted that you can get a lead in one show and that you'll always get a lead again. Like you need to be able to continue your technique and training. And even if you are a dancer, like I grew up dancing, I had you know, very strong technique. Um, but now I'm not the same (laughs) because I haven't been training. Um, you know, I, I still have the basics is, you know, but I'm not, you know, as in shape as I was like technique wise. Um, you know, but so you, I think you have to be realistic with yourself too, when you go out for a show that requires a lot of dancing. And if you aren't, um, keeping up with your technique, then you just be aware <laughs> that you know, need, you know, know where you're at, <laughs> right. Um, know your abilities and like what you need to do. So let's say that I'm a mover. I'm not a dancer. Um, you know, but I want to expand my horizons and, you know, I want to begin my training. Where should I start? Should I start uh, with jazz? Should I start with ballet? Like what kind of dance would be good for me to start with? Um, I mean, I would suggest ballet because it is, um, it has a lot of the technique that you use in other dance forms. Um, specifically for musical theater, you should know how to tap. <laughs> you should know your basics at least so you can get yeah. you know through it but um isn't a lot of the terminology used yeah like, the ballet uh, based um a lot of it is um there is some that is uh you know jazz based uh, i mean each okay. each um 
different type of dance has its own vernacular, but, um, but a lot of in tap or something, you'll be like, okay, now plie. And it's like, okay, well, that's a ballet term that across the board, you know what it means. Um, right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as far as that type of uh, base training, yeah. of understanding how your body needs to be held and presented, um, you know, a lot of it is, I think, helped with ballet. So I would. All right. Ballet. Good place to start. <laughs> so Victoria, how do I stand out in an audition? I, I notice people that are really well prepared. I think that's the number one thing. Like we started to touch on earlier, you know, someone right. that's able to come in knows exactly what they want with their sheet music or in the event that it's not live accompaniment, um, having the track downloaded instead of trying to stream it live. I many times have had someone's audition be interrupted because they get a phone call or a text message. And I'm like, oh no, like put that phone on airplane mode. I mean, if, 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 we're, if we're using a track, that's part of being prepared and yeah. having it cut to where you want it to start. I mean, again, there's a, there's a little bit of leeway if we're talking about community versus professional, I think, um, but that stands out for me at any level, you know, just someone who comes in well-prepared. I also, um, I appreciate thoughtful questions during a callback. Um, I mean, I think you never want to ask a question for the sake of just getting attention or taking up time. Um, but I, I appreciate being asked, you know, if, would you prefer I mix or belt this note at the, you know, the end of this callback piece, or is there a specific tone you're looking for? A lot of times I'll give that information, but if I don't, it, it kind of shows me, uh, vocally who understands the difference between a lot of these things and has the ability to show to show that, to show me that. So um, being prepared and, and um, maybe in a callback situation, following it up with, with a, a question that shows you understand what you're working on. I think that's all super good advice. Just personally, when you're going to an audition, how do you prepare? How many, like, not, you know, exactly how many times do you sing your song through, but you know, what's, what does your process look like? Um, I like to make sure that I'm really familiar with uh, whatever character I'm being called back for. It's like roughly know all the songs. I mean, of course, most situations, the music director is going to, to teach you the cut you're working on or review it. Um, but there's so much information online. It's easier than ever to listen to everything, to maybe even find a copy of the script and just familiarize your, yourself with it ahead of time. So that's my biggest thing, because then I can walk in feeling confident in what I'm about to do. Um, I like to do a lot of character work, especially, um, because even with singing, that's what it comes down to. A lot of people have great voices. And if, if you really have an understanding of the character and can show that, I think that's what makes the difference a lot of times. It's all about storytelling and, um, yeah, so I, I rely a lot on like researching the character, but re reading the show or, or you can find like even on YouTube, like we were talking about, you can watch it, you know, and all, all of that, I think leads to a better audition or callback experience. Anything to tack on, Brittany? What, how do I stand out in an audition? Um, for me, uh, a lot of times because you're, you know, you're given 16 bars or a minute to sing and, um, I want to see what you can do vocally, but I also want to see, you need to know your moment before. You need to know why you're, if like you're singing the end of the song, like don't just come into it with like, this is my pretty voice. Um, I need to know where you are emotionally to get to that. Um, so yeah, there, I mean, there's been a lot of times in auditions where if, if we have time, I have the actor sing again. Um, so that they that can, can be scary like especially if you're asked to sing again you know you're like oh i didn't do that well or you know whatever <laughs> so that's that's good to know that's that's not a bad thing yeah to be asked no. to sing again yeah i mean there's been times especially in this, the last production i was casting that had i gone off their first um sing through of it i probably would not have called them back mm -hmm. um but then I had them go through it and, you know, 
basically just say like, what are you singing about right now? Because yeah. like, tell me the story. I know your voice is good. You've shown me that. Now tell me the story. Um, and then it's like, oh, well, that was different. <laughs> That's what I wanted to see. Okay, right. great. So sometimes like our nerds just get in our way. Um, and so like Victoria said, just, yeah, being confident. And if you are really familiar with what your cut is and what you're doing, you're going to be less nervous to present it to us. I mean, we so need preparation to is key. Yeah. 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 Okay. Those are great. I liked that was perfect. <laughs> um, let's talk about audition attire. I know it seems like not that big of a deal, but I've gone to some auditions and I've seen some weird outfits. <laughs> <laughs> That's putting it nicely. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you consider proper slash appropriate audition attire? That's my question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> the inflection at the end sounded like there was more. <laughs> what, what's proper slash appropriate audition attire? Brittany. Uh, uh, do you want me to go? I'm yeah. Okay. Um, um, so for me, um, like I wouldn't want you coming in in a costume of that character. Um, so what I okay, would- Okay, so I mean, I was gonna ask this next, but like, is it okay if it's, have you ever heard of like Disney bounding? Like if you're I, nudging yeah, to um, it? Yeah, I mean, pretty much, kind of, yeah, I could say that because to a point. Um, <laughs> Because you want to look, so if I, you know, if I'm auditioning for a character that's supposed to be like sexy, this is a really, I think I see this one a lot, where okay. if you audition for a character that's supposed to be sexy and then you're, you're coming in and it's distracting from the story um, okay. that you're telling or the song you're telling because it's either like whatever part of it. Like they don't match? It's, it, you want to be able to portray the character you want to go for. So um, if you're like too overtly what you think your de definition of, you know, sexy is, it may not be what the director's definition of sexy is. Um, instead, use it in your song. That's where song choice for me is going to be like really important. Um, okay. Uh, uh, what else? Um, I mean, I've been in professional um, auditions where like the the setting of the show is more of a rural setting. And so they come in like in plaid and stuff or, you know, something that yeah. resonates with that world. And that works because then it's yeah. like for a director, you're like, oh, OK, I can see you in my world. Um, right. But if you're not sure <laughs> what to wear, or, you know, kind of don't want to push it too much. I would just say, you know, wear something that looks professional. Um, okay. I hate flip flops. Like, I'd rather have you barefoot <laughs> than in flip flops in my room. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, and just something. You, I mean, you don't need to be in like a suit, but just something that looks good and presentable that you take yourself seriously as an actor. Right. Okay. I mean, in the business world, they say you know don't wear to, you know, don't wear perfume, don't wear flashy colors, don't wear anything that's too like risque because you want your answers or your, you know, personality to shine as opposed to them being distracted by what you're wearing. Right. So I think right. same kind of thing would apply mm -hmm. to an audition. You know, you want to see, you know, my abilities and my personality or how I interact with or get in touch with the character mm -hmm. and all of that thing, you know, all of that as opposed to, you know, my cleavage or my, you know, right. like my flip-flops or whatever it is, <laughs> you know. Victoria, anything? Uh, I, you know, I, I like to dress roughly in the style of the show. I mean, if it's yeah. a feminine character I'm going for, I'm probably going to wear a dress, you know, but, but just like vaguely inspired by the, yeah. I mean, I've been, uh, music directing when someone comes in in full costume for the role and, it's a bit like it's a bit much like and not only that but I feel like it's similar to singing a song from the show when you're auditioning like it, there are those cases where you've been told that's okay but for the most part you don't want to do that like I 
feel like you're limiting what you can be seen as in the show. You know, so That's not only really really, is point. it just a bit much to come in in costume, but but even it like dressing in a way that is too much just one character. Because I mean, the number of times I've auditioned for a show and been hoping for one part and wind up getting something totally different you just don't know and you don't want to like I don't think you want to pigeon your pigeonhole yourself like too much you know you don't want to come up come in being just super sexy maybe you're limiting yourself from being all the other characters that aren't that and then the director just has that in their head of you so or a bad taste from how weirdly you were dressed you know right 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 you want to be and enough of a... with the flip-flops it's like you, you don't come to rehearsal and flip-flops don't come to an audition and flip-flops it just it gives that instant feeling of like it's almost like a lack of preparation or awareness of like what we do like right. we don't do that. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Um, yeah i mean you need to be enough of a blank slate so that your designers and your team can look at you and be like oh if i put that costume on that person if i put you know if I gave them this direction, they can take it, you know, so. Right. You don't want to go in by like limiting them, you know, mm-hmm. or limiting your options or the things that you could be based on how you're dressed or, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Those are perfect. Um, so the next question was, should my wardrobe be inspired by the character? But I feel like we kind of hit on that already. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about common mistakes. Um, so what are some common mistakes that performers make during the initial audition? So not necessarily the callbacks, but the like audition. Uh, for me is apo- like apologizing right off the bat that they're sick. Okay. Um, Cause like, I'll be able to tell you're sick, but if you can sing through it when you're sick, that actually is comforting to me because then it's like, if you get sick during the run, I don't need to understudy you <laughs> like, or, right, you know, right. like I don't need to be worried that you can't handle it. Um, mm-hmm. And, and if you are sick, be careful of your, your choice um, of song, you know, don't hurt your vo- vocals um, as well okay. as, as well as, you know, you need to choose a, maybe change up your song if you are sick and can't hit the notes. So instead okay. of, you know, going for the super high note that now you're super sick and you can't hit, um, maybe change your song to something that's a lower octave, you know? Victoria? Um, yeah. Um, in, in terms of singing, uh, I kind of touched on it a little earlier, like not having sheet music prepared. Like you need to have your, your cuts clearly marked, like where you want it to start, where you want it to stop. Um, you know, highlight anything that's unusual in your cut, like a time signature, key signature change, um, all those little things that really it's nice to point out to the accompanist um, quickly before you audition as well. Right. Um, so understanding that uh, if it's not live accompaniment, having, uh, having your cut of your song already downloaded and having the exact cut you want to use. Um, you know, cause otherwise it's like, oh, can you find a minute and 25 seconds in for me? I'm going to start there. And I mean, yeah, I'll do it. It's okay. But like, if, if you come in and you've got it all ready to go, it just makes such a better impression. Um, yeah, I think the worst is having a phone ring through while you're trying to audition. I mean, you really don't want that to happen. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Um, but yeah, I actually, I have a, like a, little pdf i can share on my website uh that just kind of instructs you on if it's live music how you want to mark it if you're preparing a track how you can do that and how you can cut it appropriately so you can share that um yes that would be a great resource um i'll or we'll post it on your page we'll post it and we'll link it to your um your website sounds yeah? good yeah okay. Um, so Brittany, I want to ask you this, and then I have a similar but different question for you, Victoria. So, um, any tips on how to memorize lines or pick up choreography quickly during a callback? Um, yeah. So for me, uh, I compartmentalize the things I'm given. So if it comes from like for dance perspective, when you're learning that choreography, instead of once you've learned it, looking at it as like four eight counts or Mm -hmm. uh, it's usually a lot longer but (laughs) say you're given four eight counts 
break it down to each eight count. So, you know, uh, like in your head, okay, I have this chunk with this chunk with this chunk with that one, or, you know, um, it's kind of how we say, or like, it's a little bit of an overgeneralization, but like audiences remember the beginning and end of shows. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's the same thing when you're doing a combo. So if you can get your one and your eight, you're most likely to be able to move on to the next thing. Um, okay. so, so yeah, just same thing with lines. Um, a lot of the reason we don't remember or memorize lines is because we don't know why we're saying it as the character. So if you have time and you can see those sides, <laughs> yeah. go and, and really try to dissect it as quick as you can and be like, oh, so this is my reaction to what that person's saying to me. And this is, uh, you know, this is the reason I'm saying that. Cause we're all in, in a show, you are always reacting to something. Um, you, you have a motive, you know? So right. if you can have that through line of what is um, happening in the scene, it's going to be a lot easier to, to know where you're at in the scene and to memorize very quickly, especially in a cold read. If you can look at it and be like, okay, so this is what the scene's about. And then I can at least relate to my other actor in this way. That's going to help me see it. Cause I, I mean, from the other side of the table, we're not expecting you to already have it memorized. If you do cool. But, um, sometimes that, kicks you in the tush because <laughs> when you think you have it memorized and then you don't have it in your hand and then you're like right <laughs> so yeah and even if you don't have it like completely memorized if you like you were saying if you know your motive and you know what the conversation is about and, you know even if you can't remember like all of the words word for word yeah you can kind of like feel where the conversation is going yeah. to go yeah. you know so yeah. that's great advice and I liked that advice about your one and eight count you know mm -hmm. It's like, and, and also when you're, when you're dancing, um, when I'm watching a dance callback, even if you mess up or fall or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. to me, it's like, if you get mad and walk off, that's, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, you're done, <laughs> you know, yeah. but if yeah. you, like the way that you recover, I think says a lot about you. You know. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, I've in auditions fallen my butt, and I've done lots of things <laughs> that are. Yeah. But then it's like, it okay, well, I keep going because in shows that happens. I mean, I've been to Broadway shows uh, where I see professional dancers doing it, so it's not like it doesn't happen in real life. So. Right. right. <laughs> it's not like explicitly to you know community theater, to, or, yeah, or like an audition or something. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay, so um, Victoria kind of same question but different um what are your tips on memorizing uh like harmonies because mm. that uh, can be a really difficult thing for people it really is i think uh the best thing you can do is actually work with a teacher that's going to help you learn to sight read so okay. that you can be looking at the actual music and looking at your line as you sing it. And um, like, I work a lot with my students on um, knowing what different intervals sound like. So that okay. if you're auditioning with someone else and they're singing the other part, not only are you able to look at the music and have a rough idea where it's going, you know, just sight reading it. Mm -hmm. um, but also that to, to understand things like oh, my harmony is a third lower than the melody. So if I find my starting note and it's following it perfectly, I can I can listen to the other person. And instead of being thrown off by them, you can use it to help you. You know, yeah. a lot of times people mm -hmm. in trying to get a harmony tune everybody else out. But yeah. that-, that They learn it like this. Harder. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, especially if you're learning something quickly and you're going to be doing it right next to somebody. I mean, I've been in a lot of audition situations where, you know, you even line up by your part and then whoever you're with at the front of the line, when it's time to sing, that's, you're doing those harmony parts together. And I think if you don't have that ability to, to kind of listen and see how your part fits in, it's, it's harder to learn quickly. So I think the preparation for, for that can start like kind of, I think the, the best preparation is starting a while ahead of time and really getting comfier with, with sight reading and singing, sight singing. Would you consider sight reading to be a, you know how like on your, on your acting resume, would you consider that to be a special skill? 
That's such a good question. And now, you, yeah, actually, I think it would be. I, I, when I'm music directing, that would be helpful to know if somebody feels very confident with that. Um, but I think that would be fair to put that down as a special skill. Yeah. yeah. Good to know, good to know. Or I've seen on resumes as well, you know, the list uh, experience that's not necessarily just musical theater, but like knowing, oh, this person sang alto in a choir, you know, in high school or college or, you know, whatever it may be, that that's a helpful clue too. Because uh, okay. as a music director, you are trying to make quick decisions about who's gonna be able to handle a harmony. And mm -hmm. so that, that can help. Yeah, all right. Um, so what are the final steps of the casting process after the final callbacks? So how do you like organize yourself and what, what are those steps for you, Brittany? Um, so for me, usually what I do is um, I go with my team and I say, and we figure out who are our definites, who are the people we really, really want in these particular roles. Okay. Um, and then the <laughs> headshots, become important here because <laughs> then you want a headshot that looks like you because for me I lay out my faces so I can be saying you know oh, this person's in this role this one's here and I put them on the ground because <laughs> tables okay. are <laughs> and I just start you know putting people into their spots um, and then I also as we look at the definites we look at their conflicts um, and we look at uh, if they're gonna accept other roles. Cause sometimes, you know, we may really want them for one role but they only want the other. And as a, a ca uh, when you're casting, you have to um, respect that. Um, and I will also add on that, that please be honest. When you are auditioning, if you only want one role and you won't accept another one, be honest. For me, I'd rather have me not waste your time and and vice versa. <laughs> Don't waste my time giving you a call saying, here's the role. And all these people that have as a whole cast fit with you being in that role. And now you don't want that role. So well, do you ever, do you ever, like if someone does that, if someone says that they won't take it, will you still, so let's say it's, you know, there's two female lead roles and I only want, I really want to play this one but you have someone perfect for that and you think I could do the other one really well. You mm -hmm. know, would you still offer it or would you respect what I wrote on the paper and be like, no? Um, I mean, at the callback, I most likely would, if ask. I'm leaning that direction anyhow, I would probably already ask you there. Okay. Um, uh, or I, I would reach out um, if I, yeah, if I'm really wanting somebody in a certain role um, yeah, to reach out and just say, hey, you know, I would like to see you as this, and I understand that you only put this, and it's, you know, it's totally fine to tell me no, <laughs> but yeah. I'm just giving you the option, one last option, you know. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I think, um, from my side of the table, if you're going to uh, be judgmental about somebody saying they only want run, one role, um, it kind of defeats the purpose, <laughs> especially as a community theater. Like you want people to be enjoying their time. Um, right. As, as actors, they're probably not getting paid. Um, so if you're, you don't want to waste their time um, mm -hmm. as well as yours. So. Yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't, I didn't, sorry, oh. I didn't finish, but once I get through all that, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. no, yeah, but um, yeah, I just, another like kind of pet peeve when casting uh, yeah. that, becomes an issue when you're in the room trying to cast everybody is the conflicts if you don't put like that you're gonna be missing every Saturday and then I cast you and now you're missing every Saturday and those are like the big chunk days or something like that so then you're like um how do I deal with this do I kick you out of this role now that I've given to you or it, it becomes this big old thing and it's just be honest with your conflicts because in a cast, especially if that person's like a lead uh, right. and they have a bunch of conflicts, it's like, well then, you know, this person was just as good and like in their heads or, or it just isn't great for morale. So just yeah. be honest with those conflicts. And if something like comes up within the week you got cast, like just be honest. Um, 
Yeah. It's just keeping a communication is good. All right. Victoria? Um, I think uh, the casting after the final callback as a music director mm -hmm. kind of often comes down to like the style of director you're working with. Um, I've been in many situations where we literally will sit down as a team and come up and, and really work on it all together. Um, but I also, I always take very detailed notes on uh, vocals during auditions and callbacks because um, I've also been in plenty of situations where the director has a pretty firm idea of what they want. And then it, it's more like a call to me to say, can all my choices sing work okay. <laughs> can yeah. these all work you know and then I'm able to go through my notes and and really like confirm you know give an honest opinion um so so that kind of comes down to I think the individual production team it I think the role of a music director director kind of changes depending on on the mm -hmm. type of director you're working with um but I we usually confer in some way, you know, I've never been in a situation where my opinion's just not asked. <laughs> yeah, that I feel like as a, point, really. <laughs> as a music director in musical theater, I feel like you'd have quite a bit of pull, like. Yeah, you know. oh, and definitely, I mean, that's a really good point. The shows that are are very music heavy and vocals are very important, your role tends right. to be a lot bigger. Um, those situations that come up where it's more like, this is what I would like, will this all work? It's often more of a dance show. So mm -hmm. that's it. So it's not only like a director's personality thing, it really comes down to each individual show too, because what's what's the main focus, you know, what, and, and then we can kind of put it all together, but yeah. All right. Um, so this is my last question, but we have one um, viewer question. Oh. Um, <laughs> I feel so like weird saying that. Okay. <laughs> um, so do you have any fun audition stories, either as actors or while casting a show uh, that you've had happen? Do you want to go first, Victoria? <laughs> I don't know. I'm like literally trying to decide like, oh, what's funny. Um, <laughs> I, I have enough basic dance training that I think I have faked my way into a few dance callbacks that I had absolutely no business being at. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, like what am I, I doing got, here? Oh my gosh. Like I, I accidentally was in an advanced ballet callback once and like, okay, I have basic ballet training and like, I'm going to get that. Yeah. But like to this day, I don't know if I like fooled them well <laughs> in my initial dance okay. callback because it was like You're just like a rounds. super good mover, right? Or if there was like another Victoria that they really <laughs> wanted to see, like I don't know. But um, yeah, I was definitely surrounded by actual like ballerinas, and I just tried my best to you know like ha have a good face and like stay yeah. out of their way because that was my <laughs> sure. all right so that was, i mean that's fun it's a, it was more fun accidentally fine time, got into the now. advanced callback <laughs> <laughs> that's funny <laughs> Brittany uh yeah i mean i can't I can think of some really weird auditions, <laughs> but, I, but I wouldn't want to like make fun of anybody because they're coming in right. and, and, you know, but yeah, I, I mean, I've had just, just some very strange <laughs> auditions where it's like they come in and either like read me a poem or something. And then while it's beautiful, I am like, but that's not what I asked or need to see <laughs> so, right you know like, okay, um, I'm not sure what you want me to do with that but. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. But can you sing something for me um <laughs> I think we were together on one of those shows, yeah actually. <laughs> and if I recall the monologue got like pretty intense and like it's like don't don't get that close to the audition table when you're doing a really <laughs> intense monologue like I was a little scared <laughs> yeah which kind of like brings up a point of this is kind of, it's flexible in in some opinions but okay. i do not like when actors look at me when they are okay. because because it makes you feel like you're part of the scene and yeah. you can't actively be looking at what the story they are saying and telling right. you 
Um, so that's just kind of a tidbit. That's there. a good point. That's <laughs> a good point to make, though. And Look between point. heads. Yeah, or like past, like right here. Right right. Here, right. I've heard know? that. Here, I've heard that like right above ball. my head, but don't like lock eyes with me. Yeah, I don't want to be part like, of your thing. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to do. And <laughs> and because you want to support them, so then you're just like, mm, I'm just gonna keep looking at you. <laughs> I, I mean, and usually you want to be good. taking notes and everything too. And right. yeah. like locking eyes with you, you feel like. And notes aren't a bad thing. Like I, mm -hmm. you know, I've had people ask me like, oh, they wrote a lot. I'm like, that's not a bad thing. You want them yeah. to. to that's be probably a, a good thing more than anything. Yeah, you see enough people, you have to be able to jog your memory. You know, maybe it's, oh, this girl sang this song and you know, this section was perfect or whatever. But yeah, um, but yeah. yeah that, that little too intense of eye contact. Is, <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't know how to respond. Well, to I mean, that's a really great point because eye contact is great when you're like giving a speech, you know, to an audience of people. But when you're you know, doing a scene or doing a song, you know, it, it doesn't make sense. You're kind of breaking that like fourth wall, mm -hmm. you know, in a way. So I, I really like that um, piece of advice. And although I do make eye contact. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I was just about to say that. Yeah. Cause it's really weird when people are like looking at their feet, telling you their name and like, or like already in their fourth wall and you're like, but uh, hi. Wait, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm right here. here. Yeah. 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 So one say time, who you are. Yeah. Then one time I went to go see um, a production of the last five years and during like this very, you know, it's a two person show. And so during the Jamie, the man, one of his like really emotional songs out of everyone in the audience I'm sitting right in the front row and he like locks eyes with me and I just wanted to like sink into my chair I was just like what is yeah. going on <laughs> I felt like I was on fire like and not in a good way <laughs> I, I was so scared <laughs> I was so me. scared I was like, yeah, what's going on? yeah I I don't know of many shows that are, that it don't automatically like tell you to break the fourth wall that make an audience feel comfortable and maybe it was on purpose to make you feel uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know the guy so <laughs> that's it's weird one audience member per show to like make really uncomfortable yeah. right <laughs> maybe it was like part of his like i don't know i don't know <laughs> i was scared though <laughs> Okay, so, so I have, uh, can I ask a quick question? Of course. Okay, so I have several students that I've been coaching for Zoom auditions right now to yeah. either be a part of online productions or, you know, for things that are hopefully going to be returning. Mm -hmm. And so what are your thoughts on, I mean, it's not direct eye contact. Do you want to see, would you prefer to see someone looking right into the camera acting or would you rather it be still be off? For me? Yeah, uh, well, I would both of you, but I'm just. Yeah, I would. I would still want to see that they can connect to that story. Mm -hmm. So if they're supposed to be talking to somebody, if I'm looking straight at the camera, I mean, I guess you still can do that. But I, in, because I we get video submissions a lot, and mm -hmm. I would just still rather see you you performing it to yeah. an audience. You know. Um, yeah, I think looking at the camera starts making it feel like if I'm watching it, <laughs> then I'm reacting straight to you. So it's like, uh, I, I, it gets that kind of awkward feel. Mm -hmm. I think like when you're doing a, a song, you know, looking kind of in the direction of the camera, like you would your audience, yeah. maybe shifting, you know, as, as it is appropriate to the song. Um, but as far as like doing monologues or you know sides or something like that if i see this <laughs> you know and you You're obviously ridiculous. didn't prepare and you are you know it's either taped up right under the camera or whatever and you're just reading it like i'd be like okay like, ah! all the time to be at home and prepare and you didn't even like do that yeah i mean film you don't it's the same idea of you look at the camera for your slate and then you do your scene yeah so yeah yeah, I think we're all on the same page. That's, yeah. <laughs> that was a great question, though. Yeah. Way to, way to bring the tech into it, Victoria. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so what, this is our audience question. What's a dream show you would like to work on as a musical director, Victoria, and Brittany as a director, uh, choreographer? Dream show. 
Oh, gosh, I mean, I have a lot. Yeah. Um, okay, give me, give me like one, two, three. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Um, well, so okay, to to appease my dancer heart, I would definitely. I mean, I've always wanted to do cabaret. Um, oh, I, I love cabaret. It's it's night. It's a show that a, um, attacks a lot of topics, um, and I and also has some really awesome dancing in it. So, so it's yeah. You know, it's not just like I can lift my leg or I can you know be fussy. Like um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, you, there's just a lot to it that I would like to tell that story. Um, so in a show like that, in a show like that, are you? Are you doing the Bob Fosse choreography or are you doing like Fosse style? I would say it's, ins I would inspire it because unless otherwise, you know, if you do the exact choreography, then essentially you're just doing, Recreate, yeah. doing the, the original Broadway show. Um, so yeah, I would do Fosse styled choreography. Um, yeah. Same thing for Chicago. I mean, that's, that's mm -hmm. also a show that I just want to be in. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm like that's one of my actually one of acting shows. Yeah, um, but but yeah, uh, both of those are, are really are on my high on my list. Um, there's so many shows that I would love to direct, um, but would uh, uh, it's or I, I really want to produce uh, okay. or have done. Um, like I love fences um okay i'm not I, familiar with that show yeah um august wilson and it is uh one of those shows that i really um i grew or i mean i remember reading it and i was doing a show um i was performing in a show and one of the actors older gentleman saw what i was reading um and he happened to be african-american and uh he was like what are you reading? <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, it's fences, you know, da, da. Um, and uh, anyhow, he was like, oh, okay. And it's just been something, it's a story that especially right now, um, you know, I would love to produce, um, but even more so, I mean, it's just always been on my list that I, I like to be a part of. And I think I'm realizing now though, that I may want to direct it, that I'm not right to do that. Really. Okay. Yeah. But that's, Anyhow, those are some of them. I okay. I like a lot of fun ones too, but <laughs> <laughs> You're like all the dark downers. Yeah. I know. I'm like, let's be honest. No, no, but I, I I mean, there's some fun ones too. Like, I really want to do something rotten, and I'm oh yeah, it's on our list of to do, and we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right, Victoria. That is such a hard question. Um, I. I think a lot of my favorites that I want to music direct are Sondheim just because of the phrasing and the oh, yeah. that there is to play with vocals and tone and the way you can use your voice to tell the story. Like so many character parts, like just yeah. so good. Um, Sweeney I, Todd would definitely be maybe the one I'd be most anxious to do. I just, I okay. really love the show. I love the harmonies. I love the timing of all the different vocal parts coming together in so many of those songs. And um, uh, Into the Woods, which uh, I will likely be working on soon. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's a hard question, but pretty pretty much anything Sondheim is, is up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well. Anything else to tack on? Any other questions that you guys have? I think we covered a lot of good stuff. I feel like this has been said a lot, um, but remembering as when you're auditioning that the people on the other side of the table want you to do well. Like it yeah. feels like such a scary thing, but when when you make that transition from just auditioning to being on the other side of the table, you realize like, no, really every person that walks in, we're like, hopefully they're gonna blow us away. You know, yeah, yeah. we're looking, you know, if somebody walks in, you're already thinking about how can they fit, you know? And so yeah. to let right. that calm your nerves a little bit, you know? It's a scary thing. The thing to keep in mind. Yeah. It I think is. that you have to let yourself be a little bit vulnerable, you know, when you're doing an audition like that. And that can be scary, um, but it definitely takes, you know, strength to do that. So that's a really great point to remember that you have people, even if you don't know them, you know, they're rooting for you. Mm -hmm. They want you to do well. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think too, like if if you're ever on the other side of the table, like for directing and vocal, um, I think giving the benefit of the doubt sometimes, I know sometimes it's like a really large call and you can't and you just don't have the time. But yeah. I have found that the, the most um, hardworking actors and like fun to work with actors mm-hmm. um, and actually really talented actors that I've worked with, I just needed to give them the second chance to, to do their audition once mm-hmm. more or just do one part of it once more or, you know, um, have them- Or to be called back like, for something. Yeah, or give them the chance to be called yeah. back for something that you, you they really want, but you might not see them as it. And but maybe you know at callbacks they see something um, that, or you know we can see something that uh, it's like oh okay, like that kind of fits. <laughs> that makes sense, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting to to uh, for for when you're directing and on the artistic team, how much callbacks sometimes can change your mind. Mm -hmm. Um, And cause yeah, I mean, especially the last time I just cast, had I cast based off of auditions, it would have been a different cast. Mm -hmm. Um, That's crazy. So like, you know, like later. (laughs) Well, and good thing about about, you talking about like you know some some of those actors turn out to be like uh the best to work with and have the best yeah. attitudes and everything um i think that's another point that maybe we didn't bring up that that's a way to stand out like your behavior during an audition and the callback and just how you relate to everybody i think a lot of times people auditioning don't realize that we're often like watching when you don't think we are And I know that that's played into casting decisions a couple times, you know, just seeing how somebody interacts with people. I mean, at the end of the day, we're going to be spending a lot of time together and working hard together to to bring this whole vision, you know, to fruition. And you want to be working with people that are nice and you get along with. So, you know, don't be afraid to show that part of your, your personality and, and keep, keep aware that people are watching, you know, you never want (laughs) to. right yeah. yeah honestly Hopefully you're just like, naturally nice but you know yeah. make sure that's true <laughs> i'm just acting to be nice na- like i'm acting like i'm nice yeah yeah oh, even yeah. if you gotta <laughs> use your acting skills you know you don't want to make a bad impression <laughs> yeah all right well i want to thank you guys for coming on and doing this with me today um you guys had great advice great stories and things to share um I hope that we can do this again soon. Maybe not Facebook Live, but yeah. each other in real life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Without technology. Yeah. I, know. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm loving this life. Um, yeah. This is how I this is how I normally operate. I'm very, I'm very much more like introverted than people might think, but I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Me too. You guys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think actually I think a lot of actors, actors are like there's a very much kind of half and half everybody yeah. you, you if you can get on stage then oh you must be extroverted no necessarily <laughs> yeah I, I can act or you know I can tell a story I, I, but I don't want to be uh right like, telling you a speech for you know talking to you about like, right I have no words when I have to act. <laughs> I'm smart all right well that was all my questions so i think we're good to go thank you this was fun miss you guys so much and i will see you soon 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 yes yes Yes. bye Bye. Bye, guys